So here's another test of your Socratic buddy, this uh, GPT that I have created using OpenAI's new new platform for customizable chatbots. Um, once again, I've chosen a very, very general topic um, uh, to see how, what kinds of insights I can get from it. The topic I chose this time was time. So please enjoy. Hi, I'd like to talk about a very general common concept, but one that um, I've been having trouble really getting a deep understanding of, and that is time. So how has the concept of time been regarded in various cultures, by philosophers, and by scientists over the years? Can you begin with a sort of a historical, cultural um, summary of how the concept of time has been regarded? The concept of time, a fascinating and complex subject, has captivated human thought across cultures and eras. Historically, different cultures and philosophical traditions have offered varied interpretations of time, deeply influencing our understanding of this elusive concept. In ancient cultures like those of the Egyptians and Sumerians, time was often viewed in a cyclical manner, closely tied to the rhythms of nature the seasons, the lunar cycles, and the movements of celestial bodies. This cyclical perception of time was also prevalent in Hindu and Buddhist philosophies, where time is seen as eternal and repetitive, characterized by endless cycles of creation and destruction. In contrast, ancient Greek philosophers like Aristotle and Plato approached time as a linear progression, a sequence of events with a distinct past, present, and future. This linear perspective of time, also echoed in Judeo-Christian thought, emphasizes a beginning and an end, influencing the development of Western philosophy and scientific inquiry. As we move into the scientific realm, time's understanding evolves significantly, especially with the works of Newton and Einstein. Newtonian physics treated time as absolute and universal, a constant flow unaffected by the events within it. However, Einstein's theory of relativity revolutionized this concept, introducing the idea that time is relative and can vary depending on the observer's speed and the strength of gravitational fields. This led to new understandings of time-space and its integral relationship with the fabric of the universe. The multifaceted nature of time, from its philosophical roots to scientific theories, demonstrates that it is more than just a measure of events. It's deeply embedded in our perception of reality, our existence, and our universe. Yet, despite centuries of contemplation and study, the true essence of time remains elusive and is still a topic of debate and wonder. Does time exist independently of human consciousness, or is it a construct of our minds? The ongoing exploration of this question continues to challenge our understanding and fuels further intellectual inquiry. What are your thoughts on the nature of time? Well, I'd like um, to have a little more clarification of those cultures you mentioned, I think Indian, Hindu culture, or Egyptian, that regarded time as cyclical. Was that just a kind of a general vague notion of some circularity of time, or did they have specific accounts of, of cycles of different lengths or different types of cycles of time of different um, characteristics? The cyclical concept of time in ancient cultures particularly in Indian, Hindu, and Egyptian traditions, was indeed more nuanced and detailed than a mere general notion of circularity. In Hindu philosophy, time is incredibly intricate and is measured in cycles of varying lengths and characteristics. The most notable concept is that of yugas, which are long periods of time, each with distinct qualities and moral standards. There are four yugas, Satya, Treta, Dvapara, and Kali, each progressively shorter and morally degenerated. The completion of these four yugas makes up one Mahayuga, and a series of these Mahayugas form even longer cycles, like the Kalpa and the Manvantara, ultimately leading to the notion of an endlessly repeating cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction. Similarly, Ancient Egyptian understanding of time was also sophisticated. They perceived time in two forms. Neha, which was cyclical like the daily rise and fall of the sun, and Jet, which was more linear, relating to the unchanging and eternal order of the cosmos. Their calendar systems, based on astronomical observations, 
were advanced and incorporated both solar and lunar cycles. These cycles were deeply embedded in their mythology and religious practices, emphasizing the importance of balance and renewal in the natural world and the afterlife. Both cultures thus had specific, well-defined conceptions of cyclical time, intricately woven into their cosmology, philosophy, and daily life. These understandings reflect a deep connection with the natural world and a comprehensive view of time that goes beyond a simple circular pattern. The enduring legacy of these perceptions of time challenges us to think about how our understanding of time shapes our view of the universe and our place within it. How do you think these ancient concepts of time compare with our modern understanding? Well, it obviously is quite different. I'm curious about how the the modernists or the people of the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries in Europe regarded those Egyptian or Hindu um, attitudes towards time um, when they learned about it. How did the philosophers and historians and even um, travelers um, who from Europe um, when they encountered those concepts, how did they describe them and how did they account for them? The European encounter with the Egyptian and Hindu concepts of time during the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries was marked by a mix of fascination, misunderstanding, and at times a sense of superiority. This period in Europe was characterized by the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution, which strongly emphasized rationality, empirical evidence, and a linear understanding of time. When European philosophers, historians, and travelers learned about the cyclical time concepts of these ancient cultures, their reactions were often shaped by their own cultural and intellectual backgrounds. For many, these ideas were intriguing but alien, clashing with the prevailing Judeo-Christian and Newtonian linear perception of time. Some viewed these cyclical concepts as primitive or less developed compared to the European linear conception of progress and history. However, there were also those who were deeply influenced and inspired by these ancient philosophies. The Romantic movement, for example, with its emphasis on the mystical and the transcendental, found resonance with the cyclical and more spiritually oriented notions of time in these cultures. Scholars in fields like anthropology and oriental studies began to take a more serious and respectful interest in understanding these different worldviews. In the 19th century, as European colonialism expanded, there was a complex interplay of fascination, exoticism, and often a patronizing attitude towards these ancient cultures. It's interesting to note that while the European scientific community was moving towards a more mechanistic and uniform view of time, these encounters with different time conceptions challenged some to rethink the Eurocentric worldview and acknowledge the richness and complexity of other cultures' understanding of time. This period of intellectual history reveals much about the dynamics of cultural exchange and the evolution of thought. It raises questions about how we understand and integrate different cultural perspectives and what that means for our collective understanding of concepts like time. How do you think these historical interactions have influenced our current global understanding of time? Well, actually, I'm curious about what then happened when Einstein came up with his theory of relativity that had a different conception of time. How was uh, sort of the mainstream um, intellectual reaction in in Europe and, and North America um, to that at that time? Well, and what were the effects of Einstein's um, theories, both on uh, popular culture in the West and on the descriptions or accounts of those earlier um, cyclical views of time from Egypt or, or India. Einstein's theory of relativity, particularly his concept of time, profoundly impacted both the scientific community and the broader intellectual and cultural spheres in Europe and North America. Initially, the scientific and intellectual reaction to Einstein's ideas was mixed. In the scientific community, there was a blend of skepticism and excitement. Relativity challenged the Newtonian notions of absolute time and space, which were deeply ingrained in scientific thinking. Some scientists were quick to see the revolutionary implications of Einstein's theory, while others took time to accept these radical ideas. 
In the broader cultural context, Einstein's theory captivated the public imagination. It introduced ideas that were almost science fiction-like, such as time dilation and the warping of space-time. These concepts began to permeate popular culture, influencing literature, art, and philosophy. The idea that time could vary depending on speed and gravity was both bewildering and fascinating to the general public. As for the impact on earlier cyclical views of time from cultures like Egypt and India, Einstein's theory added a new time, but it didn't directly challenge or validate these ancient concepts. However, it did contribute to a broader acceptance of the idea that time is not absolute and can be perceived differently depending on the context. This realization perhaps made Western scholars and the general public more open to understanding and appreciating the complex, nonlinear conceptions of time in other cultures. In philosophy and intellectual circles, relativity fueled discussions about the nature of reality, time, and space, and whether these concepts are absolute or relative. It also influenced existential and phenomenological thought, where the focus was on human experience and perception. Einstein's theory, in essence, made people rethink the very fabric of reality and our understanding of the universe. It's a testament to how scientific advancements can not only alter our technical understanding, but also deeply influence our cultural and philosophical perspectives. How do you think such scientific theories continue to shape our worldview and cultural narratives? Well, there's one issue I want to ask you about. About six or seven years ago, I happened to meet an American astrophysicist, and we were talking about various things. And one thing he told me was that um, in the current theories of astrophysics or physics in general, post-Einstein, he said there was no clear conception of the present or now. So that the theories of time, um, we talk about the you know, length of time or about the past or the future, but the present was insufficiently described. Would you agree with that? Or are there theoretical accounts of time within the, you know, the modern um, scientific context that do have a clear account of the present moment? The astrophysicist's comment about the absence of a clear conception of now or the present in modern physics is quite insightful and aligns with many current understandings in the field. In the realm of theoretical physics, particularly in the context of Einstein's relativity, the concept of a universal now is indeed problematic. Einstein's relativity fundamentally changed our understanding of time by merging it with space to form space-time. In this framework, time is treated as a fourth dimension intimately connected with the three spatial dimensions. One of the key implications of this is that the concept of simultaneity, and thus a universal now, is relative. What is now for one observer might not be now for another if they are moving at different or in different gravitational fields. This means that the idea of a singular, universally shared present moment doesn't hold up in relativistic physics. In quantum mechanics, the situation is somewhat different equally challenging to the concept of the present. While quantum mechanics doesn't directly address the flow of time as relativity does, its probabilistic nature and the uncertainty principle also complicate any straightforward conception of a singular present moment. However, it's important to note that these scientific theories address time at a cosmic or quantum scale, which is quite different from our everyday experience of time. In our daily lives, the concept of now or the present moment is intuitive and essential for our perception of reality. This disconnect between physical theories and human experience leads to rich philosophical and scientific debates. Some physicists and philosophers argue that the present moment might be an emergent property or a fundamental aspect of consciousness, rather than something that can be described by current physical theories. The ongoing discussions and explorations in this area highlight the complexities and mysteries still surrounding the concept of time. It's a fascinating intersection of science, philosophy, and human perception, raising profound questions about the nature of reality itself. How do you perceive the present moment in the context of these scientific 
Well, this gives me something to think about. So I will um, spend some time thinking about this. Uh, thank you very much for the stimulating conversation. You're very welcome. I'm glad to have provided some food for thought. Reflecting on these concepts can indeed be quite engaging and enlightening. If you ever wish to continue this conversation or explore other intriguing topics, feel free to return. Enjoy your contemplation. So in my various tests while I've been developing and tweaking um, this GPT, there are several things I've been trying to get it um, to do and not to do. Um, and when I ask it to not do one thing, it then start, starts doing another thing that I told it not to do. So some of the things I told it not to do was not to um, give numbered lists. So it has a tendency to say, well, when I'm talking about something, well, one, two, three, and that's not how people normally talk. And so um, this time it didn't do that, okay? But another thing I asked it to do was not to ask me questions. Um, so in other words, to leave each of its, the end of each of its um, utterances kind of with an open statement that would be easier to respond to rather than to ask me, well, what do you think about this or what are your opinion about that? In some tests I did yesterday, it obeyed that very, very well, the not asking questions, but it gave me a lot of numbered lists. Without tweaking, without changing the prompts at all, it's now doing the opposite. It's stopped giving numbered lists and it's now um, asking me questions. So um, I, I, don't, I will continue to try to tweak that maybe, but the current, I thought the current discussion went, went, went well enough. And so the, and the questions were not too specific. They did not throw me off of my um, chain of thought too much. So, um, so, but we'll continue to experiment it. Once again, if any of you have any comments, questions, suggestions um, about this GPT, feel free to leave a comment in the notes to this um, YouTube video, or you can email me at the address that's on my website. So thank you all very much.